Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Wani Making. And today I'm going to be giving you part 3 of what if Naruto had godly tune force and reality warping. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto was neglected with a black renegon over an anime symbol? And if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice, yes, I indeed have four more channels which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. Anime King 2, Anime King 3, Anime Symbol, and Anime Prince. So yeah, links will be down in the description. Go ahead, check them out, and yeah, enjoy. So without further ado or wasting any more time, what do you say we jump right into this? Begin now, guys. So, the last part that we left off, Sai was awoken to a rather unusual scene as he was in a desert being chased by a monster. Suddenly, a large crowd of people appear as Naruto appeared as a superhero saving his life. Reality then returned back to normal. Naruto had attended the academy and passed with flying colors. His intellect was on a genius level whenever he put on his glasses. He also became good friends with Hinata. Yes, they became really, really good friends. Naruto saw her as a little, funny little kitten. She was so nice and so sweet. And he did turn her into a kitten, which made her freak out until he returned her back to normal, as he found her reaction rather cute. Naruto spent the rest of the day messing with people and messing with their perception of everything. Hinata watches Naruto turn down. Sakura happiness and fangirl attitude. She was rather shocked. She still had no idea how did his abilities actually work because Naruto was doing things that did not seem humanly possible. Not in the slightest. She had no idea how he was doing these things but she had to say it was rather funny. Naruto was placed on team 7 which bummed him out a bit. He wanted to be placed with Hinata. She was a really nice friend of his after all. As he gave Hinata something though, if she was ever in danger she should call him and he will appear there to help her out or save her life. So while they were left in the class, Naruto decided to become friends with Sasuke as he turned this scene into a rather adventurous scene with him and Sasuke charging towards each other in a bloodthirsty battle. Sakura blinked as reality returned back to normal. She thought it was an illusion or genjutsu but it was real, actually real. She had no idea how he was doing these stuffs. Sasuke himself was confused as well. Takashi finally arrived as there was a whole lot of shenanigans. However, Hiruzen had called all the Jonins together. Yes, he had called all of them. Kurunai was not surprised when she saw Naruto losing his heart out of his chest when he saw her because of her looks. Hiruzen had told them that Naruto was a threat level unlike any has ever seen before. Passing the Kayubi, passing any other person that ever wore the elemental nation. The group was rather shocked to hear that and many wanted to see the boy. With his ability to literally rewrite reality itself, it was truly overpowered and destructive as well. But he was confident to say that Naruto was 100% on their side. Donzo was also a part of that as well, despite the both of them not agreeing on much things. Naruto was a valuable asset of Konoha, and with him here, Hiruzen doubted that anyone could actually attack this village. He doubted that anyone could actually do anything to Konoha while Naruto was alive. And because of his ability, Hiruzen did not even know if he could die. After the whole roof interaction, 
As Naruto was going home, he noticed something. As he fell through a warm hole and landed in a strange place, there was a lot of food as he started to eat. Not even worrying about poison or anything like that. That is where he met him, a dark haired green eyed boy, who introduced himself as one. One was just like Naruto, he had similar powers to him. One told Naruto that it's time that he leave the elemental nation and join him. Because he's a being, a being that most could not understand. He's definitely not human. Naruto did not seem surprised to hear that at all. However, he refused. One was shocked when he heard Naruto refuse. Because no one ever refused him before. Well, there's a first time for everything. Naruto started to walk away as one, threatening him. Naruto warned him if he came after him, he would kill him. For the first time, Naruto was deadly serious. However, one did not try to attack him. He did not lift a finger. But he was pissed off. Royally so. When Naruto returned, he went to the office as Hiruzen told him that Mizuki had stealed a forbidden scroll. Naruto had completely forgotten about one as he went after Mizuki. Let's just say that Mizuki was screaming to get Naruto away from him by the time the Anvus arrived because of the whole craziness and chaos. As Naruto turned the scene into a cowboy scene and started to fire shots with a gun that Mizuki has never seen before. Because the elemental nation did not have them, yet Naruto ability allowed him to, well, do what he please. So yes, that is when we learned that Naruto and Kurama were actually friends. Kurama was sealed inside of Naruto, but at the same time he was not. Naruto had created an entire dimension for him, for him to be free with other foxes there, a lot of other foxes and things that he could hunt. Kurama and Naruto had been friends for some time now, as Naruto craziness. The fox actually found it rather funny and he was there to guide him and lead him in certain areas when he was alone. But unlike many, Kurama knew the true danger that Naruto posed and knew how truly powerful the boy was as he was inside of him the entire time since birth. So he knew the true danger of Naruto Uzumaki. When the day finally came, Kakashi had no choice but to pass the group. He could not even keep up with Naruto. He could not outstrength Naruto, outspeed him or anything. Naruto was on a completely different level of his own. As a matter of fact, he was far above Kakashi. However, Hiruzen wanted him to become friends with his teammates and his sensei as well. Given the fact that everyone in Naruto's building was one of Hiruzen's agents and Donzo people as well, they had been watching Naruto. As he was always on their constant watch and Sai was there as well, as his so-called best friend. But Sai truly felt like Naruto was his best friend. While that was going on, Urchimaru was visited by one who was able to step into this reality. He proceeded to hit Urchimaru so hard that every single bone in his body shattered. One told him that he would give him what he desired. And he did. Urchimaru became truly immortal. He could not die. One gave him a blade, a golden blade and told him to bury it in the heart. Of one Naruto Uzumaki and do not remove it and bring the corpse to him. That is all he desire and he shall let him be immortal forever. Orochimaru asked him why he didn't do it. One got angry and threatened to take the immortality away. He told him that it was now the time to strike. The blade shall help him. The blade will allow him to stop some of Naruto's rather outrageous attacks against him. All he need to do was get close enough. As Urchimaru accepted this to gain what he always wanted, true immortality. So yeah guys, basically let's pull it off you guys again, switch across the place to for yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? We begin this episode as everyone could hear a rather jaunty tune, a whistle. Someone was whistling a song as they walk until they finally arrive. Hi there, he said. Sounding rather bright and chipper early in the morning. Standing at the gate was a Hayuga guard. Can I help you? The man said, looking down towards him. Yep, I'm here to see Hinata Hayuga. Your purpose, the guard said. Oh, just the chat, said Naruto. Unfortunately, that is not a good enough purpose. Go away. Ah, so you're the people, said Naruto. What? The guard said. 
I heard about you Hayugas. They say that you have a stick shoved up your ass. Is that true? The guard eye twitch. It has been more than several times now that people had said that about his clan. And he did not like it. But this child had no valid reason for being here. So, can I enter now? Said Naruto. I said no. Go away. Well, you stay outside then. Said Naruto. Huh? What are you... The guard blinked in shock as he found himself on the opposite side of the gate while Naruto was inside. As he was holding keys in his hand, the man looked down to see his entire body had chains all over them. He fell to the ground, wiggling and tried to escape but he could not. The only thing that he could do was scream out for help for the other Hayugas to hear him. He would have noticed that this was the special child that Hiruzen talked about. But the problem was Naruto did not look like Naruto at the moment. Yes, he did not look like himself. He was wearing a full body, golden suit, along with a golden mask and a golden hat. Reasons? Well, it must be obvious right now. He's crazy. Yeah, pretty much. As Naruto walk, singing his jaunty tune until his tongue start to leak out of his mouth and he start to pant like a dog and sweat. The clothes was really hot. He gripped it and tore it off including the mask. Underneath was his regular clothing. He had no idea why he decided to try that out on this hot day. The sun rays seemed to beat down on him even more. Hey, would you cut it out said Naruto. Sorry. The sun apologized as the heat rays went to the other side. As Naruto kept on walking. He looked around. Wondering which room is Hinata's. Hmm, maybe this was the perfect time to try. It's super secret awesome, amazing, amazing double secret super eye technique. He created the name himself. Pretty awesome, right? Hey, I'm talking to you, viewers. Yeah, you listening. No, 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 no. There isn't going to be any fourth wall breaking in this story. Huh? Who the hell are you? Where's Anime King? Oh me? I am the writer. At the moment Anime King is busy in a multiversal war with another Naruto named Mage Naruto. Oh, so you're telling the story? Yep, pretty much. Now get back to your damn story. Naruto looked around as he wonder, oh yeah, awesome jutsu time. Naruto breached his hands up as he started to screw on his eyes, allowing them to elongate and elongate even more until they were right at the building. He blinked once, somehow having eyelids despite his eyes, reaching miles out of his skull. Who are you? His eyes snapped back to his skull as he looked around to see two Hayugas. They were both looking at him. Oh hi there, said Naruto. What's up? I asked you a question. Who are you? Naruto focused as he heard something. See you guys later, he said. His legs turn into springs. Before he shoot off into the sky. What the hell? The second Hayuga said. That's him. The first one spoke. Him who? The boy that everyone's talking about. You know. Naruto Uzumaki. The one with the strange powers. So he can turn his legs into springs? How is that even possible? I'm not sure. Naruto arrived on top of the building as he heard fighting going on. When he landed, he saw there was a few people. Meanwhile, on the inside, Hayashi was surprised. Hinata seemed different. She was even sparring with her sister, longer. Not to mention she returned home, always smiling. Keio, her personal guard, had said that she made a new friend which friend he did not know but still this friend must be the reason behind all these changes he wonder who it is well he was gonna find out hey Hinata Hayashi blink as he looked to his side to see a boy standing there who was not even looking at him Naruto walked over walking past Hanabi as he enveloped Hinata in a hug he was a really touch feelings person 
given the fact that he kissed Sokka in the forehead, saying goodbye to her. So yeah, as Naruto break apart from her, Naruto Kanji said looking at him, What are you doing here? Well I thought we could spend some time together. Today is my day off, he said. And it seems like you're not going to be training today. How did you know that, she asked. Did you spoke to Kurenai Sensei? Well, I kind of switched your schedule. Yesterday was supposed to be your day off, but I switched it. How, she said. Oh, with this. Naruto pulled out a literal switch. Written at the top in kanji's was. Hinata day off. Hinata sweat drop at that. As she giggled a bit. Find it rather funny. Hanami blink, as she wondered who the hell this was. Hayashi on the other hand, was rather surprised. This boy was the main topic of the meeting that they had. The two elders that were there, did not like the interruption though. Who is this child Hayashi? And how dare he, just walk in here and interrupt. What is currently taking place? As Naruto blink, what's going? His eyes widen. Is this her? Said Naruto. As he stepped towards Hanabi. Hanabi started slowly back away. Well, she looked towards her sister. You're her, aren't you? Said Naruto. You're the little kitten. Little. Before Hanabi could say that, Naruto enveloped her in a hug. Hanabi blinked as she found herself. Seeing Naruto as a giant. As high as she blinked as well. Hanabi had turned into a little cat. Hinata sigh. Naruto, stop it, she said. Turn her back. But she's so adorable. Naruto said lifting her up. Well, you are correct, but still. Turn her back. Alright, fine, said Naruto. Hanabi blinked as she was being held by Naruto. She jumped out of his arms. What, what, what did you just do to me, she said, checking herself over. As Naruto was behind her, patting her head. She's so cute. Just like you, he said, looking towards Hinata. Hey, how you gonna lead her, son? You don't mind if me and Hinata go out and spend some time together, right? No. That's fine, Hayashi said. Awesome. Hinata was shocked to hear her father say that. Bye bye, little kitten, said Naruto. As he took Hinata and simply disappeared. As the two elders walk over towards Hayashi, they wanted answers. Hayashi looked at the both of them. He's seen it for himself. The Hokage had declared that boy a threat, greater than the Nine Tails. However, Hayashi saw something. He saw something that he's not seen in a long while. His daughter was truly happy. And the added bonus was... What seemed to be the strongest person that resided on this planet? Care for her greatly. And she was happy. He couldn't remember the last time he heard his daughter giggling like that. He heard his younger daughter gasp as he turned to his side to gaze towards her. Hanibi couldn't believe it. There was a giant rabbit made from chocolate written to Hanibi. Enjoy little kitten. From Naruto, your big brother. Hanabi wondered when did she get a big brother and when the hell did this came here? He didn't have this with him. The two elders were even more shocked. Their eyes are supposed to see almost everything and yet none of them can see what is going on. Was he using Genjutsu? No, that's not the case. The boy was truly messing with reality itself. How was something like that possible? Meanwhile, Hinata's eyes were wide. W where are we? I'm not sure, said Naruto. W what do you mean? You you brought us here. Well, sometimes I just go to fun places. Isn't it fun? Well, yes, but if I'm not mistaken, we're, we're in space right now, aren't we? Perhaps you're correct, said Naruto. Hinata was standing in what seemed to be a blue bubble, going through space with Naruto by her side. On top of his head was a strange little bunny that had on a captain's hat as he was calling out what he saw, like he was second in command. 
Hinata found herself sitting now in a chair as a bubble turned into a spaceship. Something that she did not knew exist but the word popped into her mind as they flew past all sorts of planets. Hinata looked towards Naruto and she shrugged. She better just enjoy what was going on. It was pretty fun. When they finally returned back to Earth, a few hours had went by. The rest of the day was crazy and fun. As it was all so wonderful. Returning back home, her father wanted to see her immediately. She thought he would be upset. However, he just asked her how her day was. No, that truly shocked her. She wondered if Naruto did something to her father, but, well, this was not normal. She better ask him later. As she was heading to her room, she heard something as she knocked on Hanabi's door and opened it. Hanabi was face first, in the giant chocolate eating it. She was covered in a thing. She looked up. It's, it's so amazing, she said. Hinata had to cover her mouth as she giggled. At her little sister funny attitude, she wondered, was this how Naruto saw her? It must be, because she found this adorable and just hilarious. Time skip. Team 7 was in the office. The large older woman rushed towards Naruto as she grabbed her cat away. To her baby, she said, hugging and squeezing the cat. Don't ever do that again. She was squeezing him in her bosom. Naruto reached up as he poked the cat on his forehead. Hey, lady. The daimyo's wife blinked as she looked down towards Tora. Did, did you just talk? Yeah. And I'm a guy. You know that, right? Yet you keep on dressing me up in this nonsense. And this stupid bow on my head. And the reason I keep on running away is you're squeezing me in those massive melons of yours. They are fluffy, but... I can't bear the breed some time. Jeez. Tora pulled out a giant cigarette as he lit it. But his lighter was not working. Hey. Mind helping me out, he said. Yeah, sure thing, said Naruto. He grabbed it and threw it. Through the window. He threw it straight toward the sun. Before it ricocheted back towards him as he caught it. And handed it to Tora. Tora took in a big puff before he exhaled. Come on, let's go home, he said. Are you talking to me? The wife of the daimyo said, wondering if she was going crazy. Yeah, you are my owner, right? As he jumped on her head, lead the way. The woman left with her cat, utterly confused. Harrison sighed as he wiped his face. Naruto, return the cat back to normal. Fine, said Naruto. There, done. So, he said, what now? Well, if you guys are ready for another D rank, no. No more D rank. It was Sasuke that spoke up. I'm tired of the D ranks. Thunder boom behind the Uchiha. I'm stronger than this, and I deserve a stronger mission. As he started to grow in size, give us something better than the waste of space D ranks. You do know that we deserve it, right? Sasuke sighed. Naruto, cut it out, he said, as he returned back to normal. Come on, just trying to darken your whole emo, angry, ghouly thing. Sasuke glared at him. But he's right, said Naruto, not to state the obvious, but you do know that I can do things like this, right? Naruto brought his hand together. Everyone waited in anticipation. What's, what are you doing here as an axe? As Naruto opened his hand, he looked down in his hand. Everyone looked closer when they saw a little chubby Naruto waving at them. Everyone's sweat dropped as they backed away. Come on, he said. That was awesome. Now, take it away, Uchiha. Sasuke started to sing. We deserve this. We deserve a better mission. As everyone stood back, Sakura found herself blushing in embarrassment. As Sasuke was moving a certain way. Until he came over towards her and grabbed her hand and started dancing with her. In the middle of the office. Soon after everything returned back to normal. 
Sasuke turned his glare towards Naruto. As Naruto pulled out a pen and rubbed out Sasuke's eyebrows and curved his eyes up a little bit, the glare was now more manageable. Sasuke's face was stuck in that position though. He whacked himself with his hand as he shook his head hard. His face returned back to normal. Cut it out, he said to Naruto. Fine, fine, said Naruto. Kakashi, do you think they are ready for something higher here as an axe? With a normal team, I would say they have to wait a month and a few weeks, but this is not your standard normal team. Well, I suppose you're right. And I think I have the perfect mission for you. Send them in here as and said. As Tazuna walked inside, the bridge builder. Huh? Is this it? He said. You're gonna give me a weird little blonde that seems like he's a bit insane. A emo kid. And a little girl that looked like she has not been in combat ever. Tazuna was cut off as his liquor was gone. Naruto stood behind him as he started to drink it. He was curious by the smell. Tazuna stepped away. As Naruto's face turned red, the alcohol seemed to hit him. Extra fast. Oh, so that's the no-no drink that I heard about, he said. Hiruzen got up looking rather concerned. Naruto, are you alright? Yeah, perfectly fine, said Naruto. He belched. A loud thunder raced through Kanoha. It was so loud. Lightning followed, striking a few buildings. As Naruto fell over, the village split in the middle. A large hole opened up. Quick, get me some water, Hiruzen said. As his Anvu rushed out as fast as possible. What's going on? Said Kakashi. Hiruzen had a fearful look on his face. The last time that Naruto accidentally took a sip of alcohol. Well, the nation was in danger. As Naruto started to laugh. The sky started to crack. The wind started to blow so hard. Houses were being ripped out of their foundation. The Anvu came back as Hiruzen splashed the water in Naruto's face. He raised his hand. Snap out of it. Whack. A handprint was left in Naruto's face as he blinked. Time itself seemed to rewind. As everything returned back to normal. Well except for the members in the office. They noticed the time rewinding. They were not affected. Uh, where am I? Said Naruto. It's all fixed. Sakura said. Looking through the window. Sasuke looked at Naruto. Every time they spent together. The more unusual and powerful Naruto seemed to be. Did he just rewind time? Tazuna was speechless. Everyone was suddenly back in their formation. As Hiruz knows at his decks, so tomorrow you will be going towards the land of wave. Protecting the bridge builder. That's too long, said Naruto as he reached up looking for something. What are you looking for, Hiruz and said. The transition into the next scene. The what? Naruto pull. The world down. Team 7 was walking on the road. Sasuke came to a stop, so did Sakura and Kakashi. The client was there as well. Where are we? Tazuna said. Well, we're going to your village. Don't you remember? The memories came late. He remembered everything. Yet, he could swear that this didn't truly happen. Oh, I did skip us to the next scene. You, you what? Tazuna said. I skipped us to the next scene, said Naruto. Your hearing must be failing you. I heard you, kid, but... What you're saying doesn't make sense. Well, a lot of things I do don't make sense. So, how about we get a move on? As they started to walk. The whole way there was... Fun, chaotic and... Well, crazy. Until they came across a large... Water puddle. Naruto noticed it as he... Reached to his ears and put his two hands there. He could hear the demon brother's heartbeat. He looked at Kakashi who seemed to be unaware. As Naruto looked at him, he did know but he wanted to see what they would do. 
<laughs> as Naruto walked past it as well, Kakashi was ripped in half by the Demon Brothers' chains. Sakura screamed. Sasuke quickly pulled his kunais as he tossed one of them linking the chain into a tree. He then rushed forward and kicked both Demon Brothers, separating them. Sasuke found himself being attacked by the both of them at once. He looked over as Naruto was just standing there. Aren't you gonna do something he shouted. Sasuke made a wrong move as the demon brother on the right kicked his foot away. The one on the left slashed his throat clean open. Sakura screamed as two kunais were thrown towards her. Explosive tags as her body was sent sailing. The bridge builder was ended swiftly. Miyazu and Gozu stood there. What should we do with this one? Oh, said Naruto. So this is what you dream about. Considering that you fail, you wanted to succeed, huh? What is he talking about? Outside, Naruto pulled his head out of Gozu's ears as he had went inside the man's dream in a rather unflattering way. None of that happened. What actually happened was... Sakura screamed as Kakashi was torn apart. However, Naruto pulled out a rope and threw it forward wrapped around both demon brothers. He then swung them. Their bodies came out of the atmosphere. Before he yanked them back down, the both of them had stars in their eyes, unconscious. That is when he went into their dream. How they were alive was truly surprising. Well, it was not really a surprise and Naruto had his rope of life. As long as this is around his opponents, they won't really die. Naruto glanced over towards Uchiha. Don't worry, next time I'll let you handle a big bad, okay? Sasuke glared at him. As Naruto appeared in front of Sakura, she was in a bright pink dress. He was in a black tuxedo. He had her hand in his palm as he laid a kiss on the back. Are you alright? My precious lady, he said. Sakura blushed. Yes, I'm alright. Thank you for... She shook her head. Naruto, she said, screaming at him. As the place returned back to normal, Kakashi came out of his hiding spot. Sensei, you're alive, Sakura said. Yep, he just tricked us. But as you can see, they're dealt with. And now I know everything that they know. So, Tazuna... Or should I say liar? What do you have to say to us? I, I don't know what you're talking about. The environment switched as Tazuna found himself in a chair. With a simple hanging light overhead. Naruto grabbed the light and shined it in his face. Talk you scum. I know that you're lying. Tell the truth or so help me God I will. Alright alright. I lied Tazuna said. He started to cry. Yet the tears did not stop. As Naruto found himself swimming in the tears. Before everything returned back normal as he collapsed. Face first as he was soaked. I'm gonna go and dry off he said. As Tezuna told Kakashi everything. Naruto came back and they were still talking. He sighed. He reached as he pulled out something and pressed. Fast forward it was a remote. Everything went by so quickly. The next moment they were leaving the boat. Thanks for the ride, Tazuna said. They had agreed to go and help Tazuna. As they just got off the boat, the place was filled with mess all over. As Naruto looked around, everything then changed. All of them were in battle gear suits. They had radio headsets in their ears. Bogey, two steps ahead of us. Get ready everyone. Tazuna was also in combat suit as well. Sasuke found himself face to face with a man with a giant blade. Zabuza blinked in confusion. What the hell? Hey, Sasuke! I told you I'll let you handle the next big bad, said Naruto. Zabuza released his killer intent while he was heavily confused. It seems like he was in right the middle of everything. His blade pulled forward as Sasuke raised his kunais but he was not fast enough. Lucky thing though Kakashi arrived and threw the Uchi away as he blocked the attack. He started clash with Zabuza. Sasuke was panting. What the hell was that? I thought you could handle it. 
You can't just throw someone in a damn battle without any time to think or even understand what is going on. Oh, yeah, said Naruto. I forgot. You're not like me. Sasuke glared when he heard that, but Naruto pat him on the shoulder. Don't worry though, you're plenty strong. Eventually Kakashi got kicked onto the water, where he was captured. As Zabuza started to laugh, I was going to give you the whole warning thing, but I'm not sure what the hell happened. However, it's over. Well, somehow Kakashi was able to speak. Don't worry, Sensei. I got you, said Naruto. It would have been over, said Kakashi. But given who is on my team, I don't think so. Well, what are you talking about? He's talking about me. I am Naruto Uzumaki. And I am going to Nurt a duck as a blade passed over his head. It obliterated the tree behind him. The blade was yanked back to the person. Nurt created a wall. However, the wall was shattered in a second. Kakashi's eyes went wide. Was that? Nurt was kicked in the stomach. He was blasted through several trees. He slammed hard into the wall. Naruto collapsed and coughed, looking into his hand, there was blood, Naruto felt pain, was that even possible? Naruto looked up, Orochimaru of the Sanin stood in front of him, who are you said Naruto, well it doesn't really matter but I am Orochimaru and with your death I shall finally gain what I always wanted, what I always desired. <laughs> you think you can kill me? You're powerful, I heard, but... Orochimaru held up the golden blade. Strange energy coursing through him. You're going to die. <laughs> Who's gonna die, said Naruto as he stood on top of. Fifteen cannon. Letter it, boys. All of his clones like them. The cannonballs burst through the sky. However, the Sanin cut through all of them. The explosion was devastating behind him. Zabuza was forced to free Kakashi as everything was blown away. It was chaotic. How did you... How did you do that, said Naruto? Well, that's for you to try and find out. In the time that you have remaining, Orochimaru erased himself as he appeared behind Naruto and slash Naruto cried out as a blade tore through his back he turned and clenched his fist he slammed it in Orochimaru's face blowing his head clean off however the Sanin head regrew Orochimaru kicked him in the chest Naruto body crashed on the ground hard he reached as he pulled out a bomb Orochimaru appeared in front of him though and drive the blade in his chest before he could even use it. The bomb rolled out of his hand. Naruto's eyes spasm. His whole body shook as the blade buried into his chest. The hilt of it was the only thing remaining outside. As Naruto live here, seemingly dead, all the color drained from his face. Until... The bomb was thrown at Orochimaru. Boom! He was sent sailing. Sakura stood there panting. She saw what happened. She rushed towards Naruto. Naruto, wake up, she said. She saw the blade, but she was trying to ignore it. He couldn't die. She seen him recovering from literally blow himself up with TNT. Naruto! She screamed at him, get up! She gripped the blade as she tried to pull it out. However, it was stuck there. Orochimaru appeared, his face healing, his heart, and his chest cavity that was obliterated healing at a rapid pace. Hmm, amusing. Your attempts to try and kill me. Unfortunately, little girl, I can't die. Kakashi appeared behind the man. Lightning covering his hand as he shoved it through the Sonin's chest. Orochimaru could have dodged, but he decided not to. <laughs> he 
It's amazing this feeling, this power. Bam! Kakashi was sent through several trees. He crashed hard, blood coming out of his mouth. Zabuza saw his opportunity. However, Orochimaru turned towards him with a smirk, enjoying his newfound strength. You know, Orochimaru said as he appeared in front of him. I've been dying to test my full new power out. How about you be a guinea pig of mine? He placed his hand on Zabuza's chest and apply a bit of force. The strange energy bursting through Zabuza's back. It did not pierce his skin though. Blood soaked his mask that he was wearing. As he collapsed down to his knees coughing up blood. Orochimaru chuckled as he looked up to the sky. That is when he heard fire style. For a ball jutsu, he jumped away as Zabuza fell back. Haku arrived and took Zabuza away, running. This was too bad. Sasuke, Sasuke, Sasuke. In the past, I would have desired your body to be mine, but no longer. I am now perfect, immortal, untouchable, godly. And now, to get my part of the deal over with. Sasuke launched another fireball as Urchimaru walked through it. Even his clothing seemed to re attached to his body. You have no idea the amount of power I possess now, he said. That is when he heard Sakura screaming. He turned his gaze. He was so distracted and so glad to show off he did not notice that. The girl had been successful as she was pulling and pulling and pulling until she released that final yell with all her strength. She ripped the blade out of Naruto's chest. Orochimaru appeared above her, his hand coming down to split her skull. That was until his wrist was caught as Naruto's eyes snapped open. Naruto got to his feet rather fast as he pulled the sawning down to his eye level. Boom! Orochimaru was knocked across the entire elemental nation. Naruto stood there. Sakura looked up. Here okay, she said. She was happy. Naruto looked at her. Don't worry, he said. He won't hurt anyone anymore. Naruto started to walk until he disappeared. For the first time, his tone was not joking. He was dead serious. Orochimaru found himself in a cliffside at Kumo. He pulled himself out of it, bones, snapping back to place, his neck snapping back to place. However, before he could pull himself completely out, Naruto feet buried into his chest, blasting him through the mountain and three more. Naruto appeared above. The top mountain and held his hand up. It turned massive, large enough to block out the sun. He then dropped it. Everyone on this coast felt the tremors went to the earth. And everyone in the vicinity saw Nuta's massive hand. Orochimaru was shattered under the force. Every bone in his body broken. However, they snapped back, regrew. He picked himself up as he raised his hand. Naruto was standing there looking at him. You can't kill me. I am immortal, Orochimaru said. As the blade came back to him as he grabbed the handle. But I can kill you. He appeared behind Naruto as Naruto turned. Orochimaru drove the blade through his hand. Yet Naruto gripped his palm. I don't know who the hell you are. Or why you're doing this. But you say, I can't kill you. No, that's where you're wrong. I can kill anything. His personality was not the same one that he was using so far. Orochimaru felt shivers went through his spine, despite the fact that he was godly empowered and immortal. Naruto punched him in the chest, launching him into space. Naruto appeared in front of him and snapped his feet across his face. Orochimaru went through space at hyper speed. He slammed into a planet, 
his body burning up on impact, yet he regrew. Orochimar opened his eyes when he saw. Naruto came down head first. Naruto grabbed his face and drived him through said planet. It exploded behind him. Naruto kicked him straight through. As the Sanin was sent hurtling through space once again, Orochimaru was rebuilding himself, regrowing limbs, snapping his vision back. Naruto appeared and obliterated him with pure, insane heat. The Sanin regrew. Naruto was getting more and more frustrated as he grabbed the man. He looked around before he saw something. He moved off at speeds that the human mind could not even understand. Naruto slammed the sun in right into the sun. Orochimaru screamed as his whole entire existence was burned away. Yet, his scream turned into laughter as he started to regrow. I told you, you fool. I can't die, the sun in said. Naruto became even more furious, so much so that the normal, blue looking eyes that he possessed changed. They became black and empty. Rage, unbelievable rage took over, which was the same person but yet at the same time not him. Naruto grabbed the Sanin by the face. You think, I can't kill you. Naruto released him, as he held his hand out, you think. I can't obliterate you. You think. I can't erase you, Naruto scream. He held his hand up, tearing the fabric of reality itself. Orochimaru watched as Naruto gain a purple ball in his palm, which grew to the size of at least 20 planets combined. 20 of the largest planets mixed together. Let's see you recover from this. The Sonin felt his skin tearing away. Why wasn't it healing? No way. He's immortal. What's going on? As Naruto launched it. Orochimaru could not escape. There was nothing that he could do. He couldn't run away from it. His magical power that was imbuing his body was being destroyed. Everything in front of Naruto was erased. That was when his eyes started to return back to normal and his body seemed to switch to autopilot. He went unconscious. His body pulled itself back to the elemental nation. Orochimaru gasped as he found himself standing on water. Where, where am I? He said looking around. One was standing there. Orochimaru opened his mouth but one cracked his face in half with a punch. Orochimaru head split open until it healed. I told you to do one simple thing, yet you had to gloat and you fail to get what I desire, you damn insolent fool. Huh? How am I alive, Orochimaru said. I grabbed you at the last possible minute. It's better if you think you're dead. Otherwise, he will kill you. But, I I thought I was immortal. You're supposed to be. W what do you mean? Well, apparently, he can kill even immortals. What? Uruchimar said. Are you deaf? I'm not going to repeat myself. Why didn't you take him if you saw all of that? I, that's none of your business, one said. I gave you one simple job and yet... You screwed it up, you insolent buffoon. I should erase you right here and now. You have my powers flowing through you, amplifying your strength and speed. You got what you need to be done. All you had to do was bring his body to where I told you. But yet, you decided to play around. One wave his hand and split Urchimaru into countless pieces. Before he burned every single one of them. Orochimaru felt agonizing pain as his entire molecules were burned down to nothing. Until he slowly regrew right there and then. One then split his head open before crushing his internal organs. Before he threw Orochimaru into a pit of flames. 
the Sonin spent the next few hours burning alive. Every time he would regrow or reform, he burned once again. Until one finally dragged him out and threw him towards the ground. You're lucky. You can still be useful otherwise. I would have left you there for thousands of years just to suffer for what you did. The next time I tell you to do something, do it without mistakes. Do you understand me? The Sawney nodded with fear on his face. He might be immortal, but these people were beyond his immortality. Well, he was the one that gave him it, so it can be said that he can take it away as well. And the Sawney did not like that. Time skip. Naruto opened his eyes. He was lying down on a futon as he looked around. Where am I? He said. As he picked himself up. Hello? Is anyone there? But he did not hear anyone. Naruto made his way downstairs. As he came across Kakashi, he had bandage all around his torso. Sensei, what's going on? Well, I was waiting for you to wake up to ask you that, Kakashi said. As Naruto walked over towards him, how did I get here? Your fight with Orochimaru. You came back here. I... I remember destroying him and then... I must have passed out. I've never got that angry before. Huh. I scared even myself, Naruto. How was he able to do what you do? I saw you hit him and yet, it was like your hit didn't affect him. He said that he was immortal, but it seems I can kill even immortal, said Naruto. But this power, I felt it before. You have? Yeah. Some time ago, this strange little person, well, he's not really little. He's like me, but he has dark hair and green eyes. He called himself one. He told me that I'm not really human, that I'm above you guys and I should join you guys because I'm beyond this world. And when I refused, he told me that I'll regret it. It's the same power I felt. Let me help you there, said Naruto. He placed a hand on Kakashi's back. Immediately, all the pain that he felt from Orochimaru hitting him so hard, breaking several of his ribs vanished. As he straightened up and stretched. So someone wants you to join them. And because you said no, he's no after you. Yeah, pretty much. How are the others? Well, they're just fine. A little beaten up and a bit shocked by everything, but they're fine, said Kakashi. But we need to find out more about this one. If he's powerful enough to make Urchimar that powerful, there's no telling what he will do. Are you okay? Kakashi asks. Usually you're more... Well, life is boring. Well, to me really, said Naruto. And when I do what I do, it's a lot more fun, so... That's why I do it. But I can relax. I can act normal, you know? You can? And here I thought it was permanent, he said. Well, sometimes I go a bit overboard. But this is really bothering me. I had to throw everything I had at that Urchimaru to kill him. If that's the case, how strong is one to make me exert myself to that limit? Suddenly, a voice spoke up. His name mean that he's the strongest. The both of them turned to see a woman standing there. She seemed to be Kakashi's age. She had long silver hair. Beautiful. Blue eyes. It was like looking at a goddess. I can't stay here for too long. So listen to me. Who are you? Said Kakashi. Don't worry. I'm not the enemy. And as I was saying his name. One. Means that he's the strongest. She raised her hand. And grabbed her shirt. She started to lower it. Naruto thought that she was going to expose herself until. Number three was right above her chest area. You're number three? Yes. So as you can see, 
One means that he's the strongest. There are ten in total. I can't stay for too long, she said. But know this. That is not all that you can do. Trust me. You're special. That is why he fears you. He fears what you will become. He... He does? I have to go. With that, she was gone. Both of them looked at each other. As Naruto started to check himself over. What are you doing? Said Kakashi. I'm looking if I have a mark. But you're not a part of their group. Why would you? Yeah. You're right, said Naruto. Wait, said Kakashi. Open your mouth. Wait, why, said Naruto. Just do it. Just now when you were talking. Naruto opened his mouth. Stick your tongue out. He did so. Has this always been here? I don't know. Wait. Naruto unscrews eyes. As he used them to see. Oh, that. Is that not how everyone tongue? Is set. Unfortunately not, said Kakashi. And that's not a normal mark. That's a number. But that means... I am zero? Does that mean I'm the weakest? I don't think so. Remember what she says. Number one fears you, so that mean. I think one is afraid of you because you're zero. And zero come before one, which would make you the strongest. But how? I felt like I was at my limit when I fought that Urchimar guy. Maybe because you're new to this. Maybe the power is locked inside of you. Huh. Holy shit, said Naruto. That's awesome. I'm zero. Shh. Don't go broadcasting that. Whoever that woman was, three, whatever her real name is. It seems. One doesn't know that you know that you're zero. So pretend like you don't know what is going on. Ah. The element of surprise. Got you, said Naruto. Just in case he's listening in. But what if he's already listening in? Then we're screwed, said Kakashi. Well, I don't think he is, said Naruto, looking around. I think I'll be able to sense it. Maybe that's the reason why he didn't come after me himself. And send Urchimar instead. Yeah, maybe. Time skip. It turns out that Naruto was unconscious for a full two days. So the other members were able to train. Sakura saw Naruto walking in the clearing as she wiped the sweat away from her forehead. Naruto, you're awake, she said. Rather happy to see him. She was really worried for some reason. Well, he was her teammate. Before she could say another word, Naruto locked lips with her. Yes, he kissed her. Sasuke came down the tree. After trying to walk all the way up, as he blinked in surprise and shock, Sakura herself was unmoving as Naruto pulled back. He placed two hands on her shoulder. Thank you so much, he said. If you hadn't got that damn sword out of my chest, who knows what would have happened, he said. Naruto blinked as he saw that she was not reacting. Are you okay? World to Sakura, he said, waving his hand in front of her. Sakura reached up and touched her lips. My first kiss she always thought her first kiss would be taken by Sasuke but no Naruto took it Sakura ran away she just ran away not sure how to react to that one Naruto blink is she okay don't ask me Sasuke said what the hell happened back there he said to him I'm not sure I got so pissed off I do unusual things. You mean more unusual than the things that you already do? Huh, I guess so, said Naruto. As he shook his head. I'm feeling rather stuffy and all. Still cramped up. Time to get things back to normal, as he spun. Naruto found himself in a brilliant, white outfit. As he was glistening in a white, heavenly aura. Time to have some fun, he said. Meanwhile, that was going on. Someone opened the gigantic golden doors. It was... 
a teen. He seemed to be 19. He had dark hair similar to one. And also green eyes as well. They seemed to be related. However, unlike the others, he had the number 2 right in his forehead. As he stepped forward, one step out of where he was. Ah, you're here, he said. Number 2 looked at him. I take it that he's not dead. No, he's not. And I need your help. So he's that powerful, said number two. More than I expected. However, I have a better idea on how to end this. He refused to join us and we cannot allow him to go on. Whatever you need, number two said, as he was extremely loyal. Come with me, said one. We're heading to the elemental nation. We can't allow the others to find out. You know what to do. Number two nodded. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. But I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.